Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Fudge Muppet. My name is Scott, and today I present you a big undertaking, a video that encompasses all of the history from the first era in the Elder Scrolls universe. If you do enjoy this kind of video, please do give it a like, and it lets us know that you love it and you want more. There is definitely a plan to do this for the second, third, and fourth eras as well, and perhaps even the Dawn and Morethic eras, but those get a little unprecise and hazy with a lack of concrete dates. But Without further ado, let's get into the video. This is the First Era Explained. The event that marks the official beginning of the First Era, Year Zero, distinguishing history from the much vaguer Dawn and Morethic eras, is the founding of the Cameron Dynasty. In the wild and endless forests of Valenwood, King Eplir would unite all the Bosma into one political identity. A united Valenwood is born, and the Aelid Elves of Cyrodiil would use this sovereign state as a buffer between them and the influence of the High Elves in Alanor. The White Gold Tower becomes an independent city-state and the heart of the Aelid Empire. In the 20th year of the First Era, the first appearance of the Sigic Order in recorded history occurs. Vornay, a Breton sage and author, travels to the Isle of Arteum to meet with the Rite Master, Lachesis, who is the leader of the Sigic monks and had counseled many kings on the Elder Way, taught to them by the Elnafe, the original inhabitants of Tamriel. In the year 68, the very last ships of Atmora would dock in Tamriel. After many, many migrations of Atmorans coming to Tamriel, this would be the final wave of large scale. Two ships arrived filled with many corpses, with those left living begging to be allowed to port. What had become of Atmora can only be speculated. The second century of the First Era is initially marked by the birth of King Harold in the year 113. King Harold, also known as Harold Handfree, was the 13th in the line of Isgrimor and would become known as the first historical Nord ruler. In the 140th year, Commander Scorm Snowstrider, while on campaign to wipe out the rest of the Snow Elves near Lake Honric, he and his force find the last stronghold of the dragon cult, Forelhost. The majority of the cultists commit suicide by poisoning the water supply, which also results in the death of many of Scorm's army. Three years later, year 143 of the First Era, Harald would be crowned High King of the Nords. He relinquishes his ancestral holdings in Atmora, and Skyrim is consolidated into an independent kingdom, with the grand city of Windhelm as its capital. King Harald during his reign would be remembered for defeating the sons of Archmage Golda. These three sons killed their father for a powerful amulet, and King Harald, with Archmage Geramund, avenged him. Come the year 198, an event known as the Scouring of Wendelbeck would occur. This event is the climax of a period called the Narfinzel Schism, which had been ongoing since the late Morethic era. The Schism was conflict and tension between the more conservative Aedra worshipping Aelids and the many clans of Aelids that had adopted Daedra worship. I quote from the book Aelid Survivals in Valenwood. At the scouring of Wendelbeck, when King Glynferon of Attar led a combined force of Daedrafile warriors against the traditional Basabix of Aelidun. The Basabix were driven out of the heartland into northwest Argonia, and thereafter organized opposition to Daedra worship in Cyrodiil was effectively over. So from this point forward, Daedric worship would be entirely acceptable to the Aelids of Cyrodiil. Two years later, the third century of the First Era begins with the year 200, when the author of the Tamriel and Tractates transcribes a first-hand account of the Bretons by a Nordic hunting party. You see, at this point, Bretons were first emerging as products of Dereni elven overlords in High Rock interbreeding with their Nidic slaves. This year would also be the first mention of the earliest recorded ancestor of House Tharn. Come the year 221 of the First Era, King Harald dies at the ripe old age of 108, having ruled Skyrim for 78 years, and had even outlived all but three of his sons, Hjolmar, Vraga, and Olmgird the Outlaw. His eldest son, Hjolmar, takes the throne as High King of Skyrim. It is in the years following Harald's death that a considerable source of Ethereum would be discovered by the Dwemer, and is studied, extracted, and processed by an alliance of four Dwemer cities. They would even build the Ethereum Forge, but ultimately this project would end in the tragedy of the Ethereum Wars. In the next year 222, High King Hjolmar dies, and the next in line, Vraga, assumes the throne. Vraga would become known as High King Vraga the Gifted. He would take his empire of Nords and begin a conquest of neighboring lands that would not end until the year 272, or according to other sources, the year 415. Regardless, this year marks the beginning of the Skyrim Conquests. 
By the 240th year of the First Era of Braga, the Gifted had led his Nordic armies and assumed control of large expanses including the majority of Hyrok, Morrowind, known as Resdane in this period, and even parts of northern Cyrodiil. The Skyrim conquests would mark the end of elven dominance on Tamriel, and the events that proceed would further confirm the rise of man on Tamriel. The year 242 is a year of rebellion. The Nedic slave Alicia, who became known as the Slave Queen, would rally the Nedic slaves of the Aelids and fight a war for freedom, with some assistance from the Nords and some Aelid supporters. The year 243 would mark the downfall of the Aelids. The White Gold Tower, the seat of the Aelid Empire, falls to the rebels. Legendary heroes such as Morahouse, the Man Bull, and Pelennor Whitestrake led the assault and killed many Aelid kings, among them their demigod champion, Umaril the Unfeathered. This would also be the day that Pelennor Whitestrake would fall, being killed after defeating Umaril. The first human empire of Cyrodiil is founded, and Elysia would become its queen. Ruling the Heartlands and Colovia, a national identity is formed with a new religion. A blending of the Nordic pantheon and the elven pantheon that the Needs worshipped would be created by Elysia, resulting in the eight divines that you know today. On a less monumental note, in the year 246, the north half of the Iliac Bay region is conquered by Nords, and they perform a census called the Book of Life. This indicates the location of which Daggerfall would lie centuries later. There is 110 men, 93 women, 13 children under the age of 8, 58 cows, 7 bulls, 63 chickens, 11 cocks, and 38 hogs. This date is considered when the city of Daggerfall is founded in High Rock in this location. Come the year 266 of the First Era, Empress Elysia lies on her deathbed. Akatosh, or depending on the source, Shazar in the form of Pelennor, comes to the White Gold Tower and transforms the dying Elysia into the first Cyrodiilic saint. Empress Elysia becomes the first gem in the Amulet of Kings, beginning the covenant between the Imperials and Akatosh, protecting Tamriel from oblivion. Her son, Balatza the Manbull, a minotaur and child of Morahaus, is crowned Emperor. We then enter the 4th century of the First Era, year 340. The Elysian Empire forms a trade treaty with the Bosma of Valenwood. The Elves of Valenwood would benefit greatly from imports that they could not produce natively due to the nature of the Green Pact, items made from wood and plant materials. Year 355, Clan Dureni rises to prominence. The Dureni Elves are the only High Elven ruling family remaining in human-dominated lands. Through political maneuvering and genius, they managed to stay that way for a long while. In the year 361, the Elysian Doctrines are enforced. The Elysian Doctrines, for those who do not know, are the codes by which the Elysian Order follows. Now, the Elysian Order began from the teachings of Maruk. Maruk learnt the doctrines from the ghost of Elysia herself, or so he says. Regardless, this religious order was a monotheistic cult and gained much influence in the Empire by this time, enough influence to have the Elysian Doctrines enforced by law. The Elysian Order was also very anti-Elven, resulting in the abolishment of the remaining Aelid lordships that had previously helped the Needs against the Aelid tyranny. Come the year 369, High King Borgus dies. Now, High King Borgus was the High King of Skyrim and the last of the Isgrimor dynasty, as well as the last to wear the Jagged Crown. During his reign, he outlawed the Nordic pantheon in favour of the doctrines of the Elysian Order. This would usher in an age in Skyrim called the Shadow of King Borgus, lasting for over 100 years until High King Wulfarth would restore the Nordic pantheon. As you know, the Elysian Order was incredibly anti-Elven, and as a result, various tensions were rising between the Empire and the Cameron dynasty of Valenwood. Borgus travelled to Cyrodiil, urging the Empire to join him in a war against the Bosma, but the Bosma used the Wild Hunt to kill High King Borgus, an event that would change Skyrim forever. The Moot fails to elect Jarl Hans as Borgus' successor, and what results is a civil war that would last many years. The Nordic Empire would soon lose its control of territories in High Rock, Cyrodiil, and Morrowind. Year 374 of the First Era, the Aelid vassal state of Nenalata, the last remaining Aelid city in Cyrodiil, is given an ultimatum by the Elysian Order. They are to leave or to be faced with extermination. King Lylorian Dinar takes those who would join him and begins an exodus to join the Dureni in High Rock. The Aelids who remained in Nenalata would be slaughtered in the Nenalata Massacre at the hands of the Elysian Order. 
Across the seas far to the west, in the year 376, the traditional emperors of Yakuta are overthrown, ushering in 300 years of civil war between lords, warrior monks, and brigands. Back across the sea in good old Tamriel, the year 393, the Elysian Order is still busy killing off elves. Malada was an Aelid temple, also referred to as the High Fane, found in the Nibane Basin of Cyrodiil. The local needs had said that the Aelids of Malada were making it so that no man could plow, reap, or seed, making their farms useless. They went to the Elysian Order and pled for aid to cleanse the devils with holy flame, and it was this year that Abbot Cosmas of the Elysian Order would lead an assault on Malada, massacring the Aelids, and they burnt their relics and books along with them. Enter the 5th century of the First Era, the year 416 holds events of great historical significance. Indoron Erevar of the Kaima and King Dumak of the Dwemer unite against the Nords occupying Resdane, aka modern Morrowind. The First Council is formed and the Nords are driven from Morrowind, leading to an age of peace and prosperity for the Elves of Resdane. However, the Dwemer clan Rorkin was not fond of this alliance and exiled themselves. Their chieftain threw his mighty hammer Volondrung as far as he could, and wherever it would land would become their new home. The hammer landed far to the west, in a land they would call Volonfell, and that you know today as Hammerfell. A land where quite literally the hammer fell. Also a man named Jürgen Windcaller, a Nordic warlord and master of the Thorn, was troubled by the Nordic defeat at Red Mountain, the climax of the Kaima Dwemer Rebellion. He would then begin a seven-year-long meditation, culminating in the founding of the Greybeards and the Way of the Voice. In the 420th year of the First Era, the Dwemer clan Rorkin finally reaches Volenfell and successfully settles the area. Meanwhile, the Skyrim War of Succession ends with the Pact of the Chieftains. The damage of the war would be somewhat permanent. The great expanses of territory the Nords had once conquered would never be restored. Olaf One-Eye, the Jarl of Whiterun, is made High King of Skyrim. Year 448, Rislav Larak, who would become known as Rislav the Righteous, is born as the eighth child and fourth son of Queen Lynada and King Mors of Skingrad. Year 52, High King Olaf One-Eye dies, leaving his legacy of Dragon's Reach, the prison he built for the Dragon Muminex. It is the year 461 and it's the coronation of Emperor Gorius, the heir to the Elysian Empire. A 13-year-old Rizlav Larik would attend the coronation with his family, witnessing the many powerful figures of Tamriel that also attended, including the High King Hjorik the White of Skyrim and his son Hoag Mercula. Darlok Bray, the ruler of the Khajiit Kingdom Anaquina, his full title the Golden Beast of Anaquina, also attended, and despite the anti-elven sentiment within the Empire, Ryan Dereni of Hyrok, as well as Indoral Nerevar and Dumak Dwarf King, attended the coronation of Emperor Gorius. Year 470, it is approximately at this time that a group of elves in the Somerset Isle city of Lalandril discovered an incredibly powerful magical flask that absorbs and reflects magic of all kinds. This flask would be known as the Flask of Lalandril and would be spread in song and legend. The elves used the power of the flask to keep the powerful magics of the Bosma in check. Legend has it that a stable boy defeated a high wizard of Valenwood by using this flask. As time passed, the elves who discovered it feared that Bosma assassins would kill them, so they set sail for High Rock to seek refuge with the Dereni elves. However, they would shipwreck off the coast of Stross Mackay, with the flask being lost to the seas for over a thousand years. Meanwhile, in Cyrodiil, year 472, the kingdoms of Kvatch and Skingrad cease their feuding. Details are scarce as to why, but historians can piece together the fact that Prince Rislav of Skingrad was married to Belen, the daughter of King Justinius of Kvatch, six years later, so it is assumed that it was their marriage that brought an end to the feuding. It is the year 477 and Clan Dereni conquers all of High Rock, as well as large expanses of Hammerfell and Skyrim. Year 478, High King Hjorik the White of Skyrim dies. Hjorik had rebelled against the Emperor Gorius and by extension the Elysian Order. He was killed in the Battle of Sungard. His son Hoag Mercula was elected as his replacement by the Moot. At this same time, a great plague swept through Cyrodiil, particularly the Clovian West. Rislav Larek's entire family, the royal family of Skingrad, died from the plague, with the exception of his older brother Dorald, who was a priest of Maruk in the Imperial City. After this event, he returned home to rule Skingrad. Dorald, being a very pious and Elysian swayed man, decided that his first hand of action would be to secede the kingdom of Skingrad to the Empire. 
The other Clovian states were furious at this act, and when word reached Rislav residing in the court of Gavach with his wife, he would take swift action. He rode with his father-in-law's armies and gained control of Skingrad by personally executing his traitor brother. Rislav would be named King of Skingrad and would be the catalyst for resistance against the Elysian Empire. Ambrogorius tried to take Skingrad, but King Rislav of Skingrad with King Justinius of Kvach managed to rout his army and defeat him with a much smaller force. This great feat inspires the other Clovian kings to join Rislav and Justinius in alliance against the empire. High King Hoag Mercula of Skyrim would join their resistance. Ryan Dereni also outlaws Elysian reform in Hyrock and starts fighting for imperial territory. This would not bode well for the Elysian Empire. Two years later, year 480, Aiden Dereni leads a series of minor but important victories against the Elysians in High Rock, though this would not be enough to slow the encroaching Elysian force. Year 482, the infamous Battle of Glenumbria Moors takes place. This is the battle that would decide the fate of High Rock, and thanks to the magic of Raven Dereni, the military prowess of Aiden Dereni, the tactical ability of Lalorian Dinar of the Aelids, and finally, but it unexpectedly, the High King of Skyrim, Hoag Mercula, who had put aside his differences to help to be rid of a common enemy. Hoag Mercula perished in the battle. However, the Dereni earned a decisive victory, pushing the Elysian Order out of High Rock. However, the Dereni clan suffered, and they would be pushed out by Breton nobility over the next 20 years, but a few pockets of elven rule remained in High Rock. A new High King is chosen with the death of Hoag Mercula. Izmir Wolfarth takes the throne and reinstates their ancient Nordic pantheon. Elysian temples are destroyed all over Skyrim and the remainder of its priesthood flee to the heartlands of Cyrodiil. By the year 498, the Dereni Elves have lost lots of power in High Rock by this time in history. Year 500, the beginning of the 6th century, the reign of Izmu Wolfarth begins. However, there are discrepancies in the histories regarding this. There is a plaque in Windhelm that indicates his reign lasted from the year 480. However, at this time, Hoag Mercula was king, as he would not die in battle until two years later in Glenumbria. It is likely that Izmu became king in 482, like I said, after Hoag. The year 500 marks the approximate date for the earliest legends of Izmir. Tales of Izmir include him defeating the Eastern Orcs with a shout, swallowing a thundercloud, and he even used a powerful thumb to restore the Nords from a curse that was laid upon them by the ghost of Alduin, turning them into children. Year 533 is the approximate date for Izmir Wolfarth's death. Year 609, King Thagor of Daggerfall defeats the army of Glenpoint, a victory that would cement Daggerfall as the predominant economic, cultural, and military force in southern High Rock. Meanwhile, across the seas in Yakuta, Mansel Sesnit became military dictator of Yakuta and successfully gains control of the whole empire within eight years, despite a prior hundreds of years of civil war. Year 617, Mansel Sesnit is assassinated by a commoner named Randik Torn. Randik assumed control of the government and tried to continue creating unification of Yakuta. He would rule for 120 years and during his reign, he would introduce the law that meant only sword singers could wear their swords, not commoners. Year 660, the Battle of the Dragon Wall takes place. Malok, the orcish god of the Velothi Mountains, is defeated and he flees east. It is said that his fury and anger at this defeat would be the reason behind the eruption of Red Mountain eight years later. Malok, by the way, is another understanding of the same aspect you would know as Malakath. It is the year 668 of the First Era and the beginning of the War of the First Council, a war between the Kaima and the Dwemer caused mainly by Kagranak's intention to build the Numidium, considered blasphemous by the Kaima. Red Mountain would also erupt, causing a hiding of the sun for a whole year, an event known as Sun's Death or the Year of Winter in Summer. Year 670 Iliath Temple in Western Stonefall's Morrowind, a shrine to Azura, is converted to the worship of the Tribunal. However, this is an example of another discrepancy, as the Tribunal has not been yet created, so it is likely that this temple was converted in the events preceding the Battle of Red Mountain 30 years later. Year 700, the Battle of Red Mountain, the climax to the War of the First Council would begin. Without going into far too much detail because the Battle of Red Mountain has many versions and suggested outcomes, as well as the fact that it is considered by many to be a dragon break, I will just talk about the facts we can 100% confirm. 
The Dwemer under Dumak Dwarf King and the Kymagrate Houses, as well as the Ashlanders under Hortator in Doral Nerevar, were fighting each other. But many other sources also say the Nords would take this internal strife as an opportunity to attack Morrowind and rebuild the territories of the ancient Nordic Empire. It is said that Shaw himself revived Izmir Wolfarth as the Ash King, and Izmir would lead the Nords into the Battle of Red Mountain. Regardless of the details, the fact is that this is where the Dwemer would instantly disappear all across Tamriel. The War of the Crag, a rebellion of the Falmer against the Dwemer underneath Skyrim would also come to an immediate end since the Dwemer vanished. The Falmer then began spreading through Blackreach and even would mount raids on the surface. The Tribunal, Almalexia, Vivek, and Sothasil would soon use the tools of Kagranak on the heart of Lorcan and become the living gods of Morrowind for thousands of years. This would also be where the Kaima became known as the Dunma, as Azura cursed them with ash skin and red eyes. Across the seas in Yakuta, year 720, Frandar du Hunding Helansai no Shira is born in the province of High Desert, a man who would grow to become the greatest Ansai warrior in history. You may know him more simply as Frandar Hunding. Frandar is his only giving name, Hunding is the name of the region of his birth, no Shira means person of noble birth, and Helansai is his title of sword sainthood in the language of Yakuta. Year 734, Frandar Hunding's father is killed in an insurrection, leaving Frandar to care for his mother and four brothers. He used his great skill with a sword as an escort and bodyguard for hire to provide money. Year 737, Randik Torn, the military dictator of Yakuta, dies, and a vicious civil war follows in the aftermath of his death. Amongst the strife at age 17, Frandar would go on to become a sword singer and master Ansai. He searched for enlightenment through the path of the sword. As he became more famous, many more would challenge him to a duel. Year 750, at 30 years old, Frandar Hunding had fought and won more than 90 duels, killing all of his opponents. He had gained such skill and mastery, he stopped using swords, only using his Shihai, a spirit sword made from his very soul. He would travel the lands, winning many battles, killing brigands and monsters alike. Year 760, Divad Hunding, Frandar Hunding's only son, is born. Frandar would be absent for most of his life. By the year 776, at age 16, Devad Hunding, frustrated by his father's absence, abandoned his training to become a sword singer and instead became an acrobat and famous bard. By the year 780, Frandar Hunding had become a hermit years prior, retiring to a cave in the mountains of his homeland to write his philosophy into a book called the Book of Circles. But in this year, Emperor Hera, the man who had risen in Randik Torn's place, tried to gain control of the empire by exterminating the sword singers. He would first target the most famous in Yakutan society, including Devad Hunding, who was first on the list. 100 of the Emperor's men went to arrest Devad while he was eating with his elderly mother. While they had Devad in chains, one of the men struck his mother and killed her. Within Devad, the spirit of the way awoke in him, and he turned his chains into weapons. He then slew four of the guards and escaped out the window. Devad would be a key figure in the resistance against Hera, and he would eventually convince his father to lead the war against Hera, with Devad as his advisor and soldier. At the ending of the war, they were victorious, but with less than a thousand sword singers remaining. Frandar Hunding and his army would board a flotilla of ships and begin a migration east to Hammerfell. In the year 792, Yakuta is destroyed and sinks into the sea. There are multiple theories as to why, but one of the more common is that a renegade band of Ansai called the Hirodurge used powerful stone magic to destroy Yakuta after a defeat in battle. Enter the 9th century of the First Era, year 800. Captain Yurik Flodus establishes North Point in High Rock to serve as a way station to accommodate trade route vessels. The first mention of way rest in High Rock also occurs. It is hard for historians to pin down its exact foundation date, however its name had derived from the fact that it was a peaceful fishing village that people would rest at, having travelled through the way of the eastern end of the Iliac Bay, which at this time had many troubles in the form of orcs and Akaviri pirates, hence the name Wayrest, a well-needed rest for travellers. Year 808, the Akudans finally arrive in Tamriel after many years of travel. The Regatta, or Warrior Wave, drive the beast folk, goblins, and needy people from Hammerfell. Frandar Hunding would lead some of the bloodiest campaigns against the flint-toothed tribes of goblins, but he would lose his life during them. Devad Hunding would assume the leadership of the Regatta following this. Many of the goblins and beast folk would flee to the north and join with the orcs at the newborn city of Orsinium. 
Year 853, a clan of Ultima Daedra worshippers in Hammerfell called the Kolanya clan are exterminated by Yakutan colonists. With the wars of the past against the left-handed elves in Yakuta, the Yakutans did not look kindly on the elven clan. King Zawan of Yath led his army against the Kolanya clan in the Ashabar Pass, driving them from Hammerfell. However, Zawan was killed and would be succeeded by his son. Year 874, the warlord Fulgeg's army of orcs and goblins was defeated by the Yakutans. Bretons denied the survivors passage through Bankarai Pass, forcing them to flee through the Dragon Tail Mountains, eventually resulting in them finding Orsinium. Year 907, the Dereni clan residing mainly on the Isle of Balfiera, led by Peregrine Dereni, successfully repel an attack by the Yakutans, who by this point have started to be called the Red Guards. Year 946, the famous warrior hero, leader of the Order of Diagna, founder of the arena, and its first blade master, Gaiden Shinji, is quoted saying his famous credo, the best techniques are passed on by the survivors. Year 948, King Zhou Li, the ruler of Daggerfall, wrote to Gaiden Shinji and proposed an assault on Orsinium. Two years later, year 950, the Siege of Orsinium would begin. Daggerfall, the new kingdom of Sentinel, and the Order of Diagna, led by Gaiden Shinji, joined forces to destroy the Orcish Kingdom. It would take over 30 years before the Orcs would be driven out for good. Unfortunately, King Jolie had secretly planned to invade Hammerfell after Orsinium was defeated. He manipulated Gaiden Shinji and Baloth Bloodtusk into having a duel for Orsinium's fate. During the battle, Jolie's archers killed them both, effectively removing the most powerful warriors warriors that could oppose him in both Orsinium and Hammerfell, killing two birds with one stone. Year 973, King Jolie accelerated his plans and went to invade Hammerfell before Orsinium had been fully conquered. However, his army was stopped by Mikella Lai and her five companions at Bankarai Pass. They were powerful sword singers but would die defending the pass, but managed to kill King Jolie and his forces before they did, thwarting his plans for conquest. Year 980, Orsinium is finally defeated, sending the orcs scattering far and wide. The lands surrounding were far safer and far more accessible without orcs in the way, allowing for Wayrest to become a major trading city within the decade. Three years later, year 983, the city of Evermore is founded by the River Horse Bretons, after trade down the Bajulze River was opened up in the absence of raiding orcs. So concludes the first millennium of the First Era. Year 1029, Empress Hestra of the Elysian Empire deposed the vampire king Styric of Verkarth. King Styric fled west at the head of his vampire clan called the Grey Host. But when the Grey Host reached the Bankarai garrison, they broke like a wave on rock. Empress Hestra's legions caught and killed the survivors. She was very impressed by the Bretons and allowed them to be admitted into the Empire. Baronies to House Dorel and House Montclair are granted. Year 1030, the Red Eagle, or Phaelon in the language of the Reach, fought a rebellion against the Elysian Empire's incursions. Many kings of the Reach bent the knee, but Phaelon refused, eventually even seeking out the Hag Ravens, trading his heart to become a spirit of vengeance. The rebels grew strong enough to drive out the Elysian forces, but Empress Hestra returned with an even larger force, putting an end to Phaelon and his rebellion, though it is said that he was fighting alone and naked to the death killing over a thousand men, but this is likely hyperbole. The Elysians also tackled piracy in Black Marsh, year 1033. Piracy in the Topol Bay area was becoming rife and Hestra wanted an end to this. The infamous pirate Red Bramon was finally brought to justice. The Imperial Navy would bring Hestra his head. This campaign would bring Tamriel some of its first big cultural insight into the Argonians. Year 1051, Vincinius Imbrex becomes the Archbishop of Coral. During his 36-year tenure, he writes a book called The Four Abominations, evil creatures which should be slain in the name of Stendar. These included Daedra, man-beasts, undead, and vampires. Year 1100, the city of Wayrest had become so large that it would now be founded as a powerful merchant kingdom in its own right. Ferangul Gardner is proclaimed the first king. Year 1102, the Aelid Warlord, Cairan, dies at the hands of an unknown assassin. Cairan was a member of the Rulanyul clan, a rumoured Merlag Baldafoti, and most well known for building and losing three separate dominions in his long life. Year 1188, Fervidus Than becomes Archprelate of the Elysian Order. He would write an edict proposing the use of the Staff of Towers to cause a dragon break, removing the elven aspects from the god of Akatosh. 
Now I hope you've been following well because this is where stuff gets a little bit odd and crazy. You see, there is a dragon break in the timeline which caused all kinds of crazy. We have another entire video linked in the description that goes into depth explaining these such dragon breaks, but this is the most significant one in history, with scholars estimating it took place over 1,008 years, a period of timeless time, if that makes any remote sense. I really do recommend you go and watch our breakdown of dragon breaks, but regardless, this 1,008 eight year dragon break would have started around the year 1200. It could be earlier, could be a little bit later, but it's hard to pin down. It is said to have encompassed the 13th to 23rd centuries. I just needed to let you guys know because there are some documented historical events that would have occurred during the dragon break. For example, in the year 1301, the Slode of Thras, a slug-like race of beast folk, would sack the Ultima city of Skywatch. In the year 1306, the hyperagonal collapse occurred where 27 Sijic monks were converted into glistening thin films of liminal particles. This disaster was the catalyst for the abandonment of the Eldaber Monastery for mystic inquiry. Year 1427, the Battle of Duncree Bridge occurred, a battle between Anticlare and Sensford in High Rock. So among these events, a whole lot of crazy happens in the Dragon Break, called the Middle Dawn, but the first event that happens after the Dragon Break is a rather horrible one. Year 2200, the Slode released the Thracian Plague. They artificially created this disease to devastate Tamriel, and so it would. It decimated half the population of the Iliac Bay, with nobility from Daggerfall, Sentinel, and Wayrest seeking refuge on the Isle of Belfiera. It was concentrated on the western coast of Tamriel, but it is said that ultimately, over the next years, it would claim half the population of Tamriel. Enter the year 2260, the Colovian King of Anvil, Baron Admiral Bendu Olo, formed the All Flags Navy. Red Guards, Bretons, Colovians, Elves, and Argonians together, they created the largest naval force in Tamriel's history. They sailed to Thras, slaughtered all the slow they could find, and used powerful unknown magics to sink their islands into the sea. Fast forward to the year 2305, Hyrox secedes from the Elysian Empire after the excess pressures of the Elysian Order. The same Bankarai garrison that earned them the place in the Empire would be their ticket out. Abbot General Priscus Makator, with his legions of piety and grace, could not penetrate the Bankarai garrison. Year 2321, the War of Righteousness begins. The west of Cyrodiil was also fed up with the Elysian Order, and together they formed the Colovian Estates, separating themselves from the Empire. Years of internal struggle followed for the Elysian Order's excessive priesthood. Put simply, it began to collapse under its own bullshit. Lots of history was destroyed during this brutal war. A decade later, year 2331, the War of Righteousness ends with the Elysian Order and the Elysian Empire collapsing. Cyrodiil is split into three parts, the Clovian Estates to the west, the Independent Heartlands, and the Nibene to the east. This would result in the cultural divide between the Clovians and the Nemanese that would continue to grow over the following centuries. Now we jump forward quite a bit, with the next 300 and so years being pretty quiet. Year 2702 of the First Era, the entire population of Wayrest is moved within the walls of the Gardener's Estate for protection against rampant pirates and Akaviri raiders. Year 2703, the first Akaviri invasion of Tamriel in history. The Saisi of Akavir would make landfall in Skyrim, cutting a bloody swath through it. They would have progressed into Cyrodiil as well, had Reem and Cyrodiil not united the East and West into a united army for the first time in centuries. At the Pale Pass, there was a brief battle between General Riemann and the Akavir, but they would soon surrender, having found what they were seeking in Tamriel, a dragonborn. Riemann Cyrodiil would incorporate the Akaviri army into his own, taking the most elite as his personal dragon guard. The Imperial Legions, as you know today, found their origin in the organized armies of Riemann, incorporating many Akaviri tactics and skills. Riemann Cyrodiil formed the land of Cyrodiil that you would know today, with aspects of Hyrok, Colovia, Nibene, and Akaviri merged into a common whole, a second empire. Year 2704, Riemann divided the Reach between High Rock and Skyrim. Riemann had focused on dealing with the Madmen of the Reach. I quote from the Improved Emperor's Guide to Tamriel, 
the Emperor sliced the Reach into Imperial-controlled High Rock and Skyrim, limiting the spirit of the clan chieftains to formed packs against him and stopping ore excavations from falling into the hands of a single beneficiary. As the Second Empire grew, forays to control the Reach, usually by the armies of Evermore and Solitude, were attempted on numerous occasions, but there was never a decade when troops weren't sent, usually to their deaths, in the hope of taming the wilderness and introducing the primitives to the virtues of a proper economy. Year 2714, the Second Empire conquers Valenwood. After centuries of relentless warfare on the borders with Cyrodiil, the Bosma finally succumbed to the control of man. However, there would be plenty of native resistance to the occupying legion for years to come. In the year 2729, the city-state of South Point is founded in Valenwood. A Clovian governor named Zentonius, born in Kavach, was awarded the land after defeating a raid of wood orcs. Year 2762, the founder of the Second Empire, Riemann I, dies and would be succeeded by his son, Emperor Kastav. Year 2790, the great Aelid sage, Jerhane Fire, is born. He would grow up and speak freely to others about the Aelid tribes and their religion, culture, etc., explaining that they are a diverse group with many hues. His insight is some of the most valuable Aelid record remaining. Four years later, year 2794, Riemann II is born. Year 2801, Emperor Kastav ordered the Dragon Guard of Skyhaven to seize Nordic hostages from Markarth and Roldan to coerce the satisfaction of conscription quotas. Year 2804, Emperor Kastav cut off Skyhaven Temple supplies when the Dragon Guard refused to deal with the Winterhold Rebellion, which resulted from the kidnapping of hostages from Markarth and Roldan. Year 2805, an Akaviri commander named Kalion, who was prior rejected from the Dragon Guard, is sent by Kastav to suppress the Winterhold Rebellion. The locals of the Reach besiege Skyhaven Temple, not distinguishing between the Dragon Guard and the Akaviri attacker in the form of Kalion. The siege is lifted one year later. Year 2806, Emperor Kastav's incompetence has reached its end. His son, Riemann II, deposes his father and is crowned Emperor. Emperor Riemann II successfully negotiates an end to the Winterhold Rebellion and ushers in a golden age for the Empire. In the year 2811, the Blackwater War begins. Riemann II's first act of expansion for the Empire is to claim Argonia for his own. This would eventually result in the creation of the Imperial province called Blackmarsh. Year 2812, the construction of Alduin's Wall at Skyhaven Temple is commissioned. Year 2813, the language of the majority of legal documents up to this point had been High Elven, but this would now be changed to Cyrodiilic, the precursor to the modern Tamrielic language. Year 2815, there are various reports of dragons in Skyrim. Dragons have been going extinct for millennia, but few remain still. Year 2818, the Dragon Guard hunted down and killed a dragon, and in addition, the construction of Alduin's Wall was completed. Emperor Riemann II visited and dedicated the wall officially. Year 2820, an emissary of the Second Empire, Eric of Guise, lived among the Ultima in the Somerset Isles and wrote many vitriolic rants against its citizenry. He was not fond of the elves. In this same year, Governor Pomptinius is appointed the ruler of Craglawn in Hammerfell and during his rule he would build the sewers of Elenhir. Year 2837, large parts of Argonia are successfully conquered and the province of Blackmarsh is created. The year is 2840 and Riemann II, having conquered Argonia, now set his sights on Morrowind. This date would begin the Four Score War, a war that would drag on for 80 years. Year 2851, Emperor Riemann II falls in battle against the Dark Elves. His son, Brazilus Dor, was crowned Emperor. He was said to have hated the responsibilities of governing, spending more of his time at his country estate near Skingrad, while his potentate, Sidri Ashak, handed mantles of state. This was said to be the Emperor's best decision because Sidri Ashak was a gifted administrator and man of integrity. Year 2871, the Dragon Guards slay the dragon named Krajotan in the southern Jural Mountains. Year 2877, Emperor Riemann III is crowned Emperor, presumably after his father's death, most likely from old age or some other anticlimactic end. Year 2899, Riemann III accuses his wife Empress Tavia of treason and sends her to prison in Gideon in Blackmarsh. Year 2902 marks the reign of Jininji Ri, the main of elsewhere. 
Year 2906, the Curus Mines, extensive mines in Glenumbria, a famed source of crystal and gems, is abandoned after a ceiling collapse renders most of it inaccessible. Year 2911, the War of Avicii begins with a slowed of Thras invading the Somerset Isles using necromancy and infernal machines. It was a devastating war that would end by the year 2917. And here we have the final year of the First Era, year 2920. The first event that would occur is that an amateur would summon Molag Bal to destroy the settlement of Gliverdale and Valenwood. This is also the year that Mehrin's Dagon would be summoned to destroy Mournhold. So Thassil and Almalexia would not be able to prevent its destruction, but they would manage to banish him back to oblivion. After many years of conflict, the four score war between the Empire and Morrowind still waged. However, a truce had been called, but this truce was broken when the Empire sacked the Dunmer Fortress of Blackgate. As a result, Emperor Reman III and his son Prince Juliak would be assassinated by the Morag Tong, the Dunmer Organization of Assassins. Reman's potentate, Versa Duche, assumes control of the Imperial Throne and declares the beginning of the Second Era. The Second Empire would be continued under the rule of the Saisi potentates for many years before its eventual demise. You'll have to tune in for the next video in the series to hear the history of that. Guys and girls, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was a massive undertaking, recording, editing, and writing this video, but it was really fun. The entire history of the First Era, just under 3,000 years of the Elder Scrolls timeline. Thanks so much for watching, guys. My name's Scott from Fudge Muppet, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.